Hi, my name is Alex Fleischman, and welcome to the video overview for the roller coaster demonstration. All right, so this demonstration will allow students to apply their knowledge of the conservation of energy to a simple marble roller coaster. The goal of this demonstration is for students to find the minimum height the marble can start from to make it around the loop of the marble roller coaster without leaving the track. Then students will find the related velocity of the marble at the top of the loop using a photo gate. Students should know at this point that kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared and potential energy is equal to mgh. Students must also know the conservation of energy. They must know that initial potential energy plus initial kinetic energy is equal to final potential energy plus final kinetic energy. Students must also know that initial energy plus work is equal to final energy. This happens in an open system. All right, so how are we gonna approach this demonstration? First, we must measure the height of the loop. Next, we must state that initially the marble only has potential energy. Therefore, initial energy is equal to potential energy, which is equal to mg times the height of the incline. Next, we must state that when the marble travels around the loop, it has both potential and kinetic energy. Therefore, the energy on the loop is equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy, which is equal to mgh of the loop plus 1 half mv squared. Let's analyze the two equations in yellow. Well, the theoretical smallest height the marble can be placed at and make it around the top of the loop with a velocity of 0 meters per second is the height of the loop. This is because of the derivation stated below. Let's begin with the conservation of energy. mgh of the incline is equal to mgh of the loop plus 1 half mv squared. Now we have to state that the height of the incline is equal to the height of the loop, which is equal to variable h. Next we get the equation mgh is equal to mgh plus 1 half mv squared. And by subtracting mgh from both sides, we get 0 is equal to 1 half mv squared. Therefore, v is equal to 0 meters per second, because the ball does have a mass. Well, what does this actually mean? This notion infers that for the marble to have a velocity at the top of the loop, the initial height of the marble must be greater than the height of the loop. Therefore, h of the incline must be greater than h of the loop. Now let's solve for the theoretical velocity of the marble at the top of the loop. Therefore, we could state that mgh of the incline is equal to mgh of the loop plus 1 half mv squared. Next, we can divide both sides by m and get g h of the incline is equal to g times h of the loop plus 1 half v squared. Next, we can subtract g h of the loop from both sides, and we get, I flipped over the equations, but 1 half v squared is equal to g times h of the incline minus h of the loop. Then we multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. Then we take the square root of both sides and get v is equal to the square root of 2g times h of the incline minus h of the loop. A couple of my algebra-based physics students helped me out with this demonstration. They gave their guess for the height of the incline and their reasoning why. Dan said that the height of the incline should be 0.2 meters. Note, this is the height of the loop. His reasoning was, the ball will make it to the top of the loop and then the force of gravity will allow the ball to continue its motion around the loop. Mitch said the height of the incline should be 0.24 meters. He used the conservation of energy and found that the velocity is equal to the square root of 2g h of the incline minus the height of the loop. And he got for his value of 0.89 meters per second, which he thought is sufficient enough to bring the ball around the loop. Tark said that his height of the incline should be 0.28 meters. He gave the same reason as Mitch and found that the velocity at the top of the loop would be 1.25 meters per second, which he thought is sufficient enough to bring the ball around the loop. Let's go to the lab to test these initial heights. Tark was correct in his answer. However, let's go through each part. Dan was incorrect because if a ball has a zero velocity at the top of the loop, acceleration due to gravity would be pointed directly downward. Therefore, it would not continue its motion around the loop. Hence, the ball will just fall directly downward. When we tested Mitch's height, the ball jumped a little on its way downward. When we tested Tark's height, it made it fully around with no jumps. So how can we calculate the minimum velocity the marble must have to fully make it around the loop? At this time, pause the video and try to find the minimum velocity on your own. 
Well, the minimum velocity will be the square root of rg, which in our case of a 0.2 meter loop, it will be 0.98 meters per second. The key for deriving the value of velocity is that we must set normal force equal to zero. How can we calculate the minimum height the marble must have to fully make it around the loop, given the height of the loop is 0.2 meters? Well, this is simple. Go back to our energy conservation equation and substitute V for the square root of RG and solve for the height of the incline. Our height of the incline would be 0.25 meters. So with respect to our students, Mitch was actually the closest in the value. However, Tark's made it fully around the loop. So we're going to give it to Tark. Let's go through a couple questions. Why won't the height of the loop of the ramp be a high enough starting point to get the marble around the loop? Well, due to the conservation of energy, the marble will have a velocity of 0 meters per second at the top of the loop. This is not enough to bring the ball fully around the loop. See the derivation in the previous couple slides. If the marble goes down the loop and were to then slide across the floor, how much of the energy would be potential or kinetic energy? Well, all kinetic energy, since the height above the ground is zero and it is traveling at a velocity. And when a roller coaster begins its first descent up a ramp, what is allowing the cart to, in quote, gain energy? Well, the force exerted by the crank does work on the cart to bring the cart up the incline. Therefore, the crank is transferring its energy onto the cart so that the cart begins with an initial potential energy of the energy at the top of the incline is equal to the work exerted by the crank force, which is equal to mgh of the incline. 